Hey everyone, welcome to part three of our three part documentary on our trip from Atlanta, in Northern BC to Dawson City in the central Yukon. If you've missed part one and two, I've linked them in the top here and in the description below. You should watch those first before we go on with this one. Last week we ended with us having to cross some open water and we made it past there. This week we're going to continue on for some really beautiful camping spots and of course some more obstacles before we, or do we, make it to Dawson City. We have just passed McCabe Creek and continue our way to Pelly Crossing. It's a beautiful ride through a variety of birch forest, pine forest and typical boreal forest. There were some sections with a lot of freefall and it's late by the time we find a good spot to camp on the shore of a small lake. Every night after being stuck in overflow or just wetness in general, before having dinner, we spent some time clearing out all our tracks, part of our daily chores to get all those ice balls out of there before they freeze over overnight. Good morning on day eight. It's been a week since we left home and every day we face struggles and obstacles, but we have overcome all of them so far. We most likely will arrive to Pelling Crossing today and we're starting to somewhat see the light at the end of the tunnel, though we're very much not out of the woods yet. We, uh, we camped on a little lake this morning. The sunset last night was beautiful, and this morning, the sunrise, let me show you. <laughs> Justin, you're a real champ, adventuring like a boss. approaching Pelly Crossing, I wonder if we are all thinking about what treat we are going to buy ourselves at the store. That's always a big decision. And when we showed up there this morning, the store was closed, but the gas station was open, thankfully. And the guy told us, like, well, they're short staff, so they're not always open. And literally, as we were finished our gas, the store opened up, so we were very happy so that we could buy ourselves some special treats. Trailer full of gas for the last part. <laughs> Yeehaw! The last one, the longest stretch. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, clean up and yep. walk. Yeah. Um, snacks. Yep. Uh, rewarding snacks. Mm, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. From Pelly Crossing to Pelly Farm, there's a choice of using a road or the Pelly River. The locals recommended us to use the road, and so we did. It was really nice to have a stretch of easygoing conditions with the sun shining on our faces. And the views of the Pelly River were pretty nice. Wow, the sun is shining, it's warm. The road we were worried about was going to be plowed has not been plowed, it's so far so good. We're just having a little snack. Awesome. We arrived at Pelly Farm and are greeted by Dale. We had been in touch with Dale for river and trail updates. We originally were going to continue on the river here to visit Jim and Carol from Stepping Stone, which is a homestead and Yukon Quest stop on the Yukon River. Jim and Carol had invited us for an overnight stay and wood-fired pizza. But unfortunately, because of the overflow cost delay on our end, we just missed them as they had to get out. Thanks again for your kind offers and your help, Dale, Jim and Carol. Dale explained us the next part of the route and to beware of spring glaciers. So on we go, directions Croggy Creek and the Stewart River. So 
what, what happened? I was trying to go across this big spring glacier here and I went a bit too high and went into the dam. Oh no. Yeah. Watch out honey, don't fall. Oh, that's cold. That's cold water. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. I'm wet to my crotch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. We got a lot of drawing to do tonight. <laughs> Dad brought my machine over. It's Leandra popping in from the future. 80% of the people that watch our videos are not subscribed. So if you've been enjoying this video, please subscribe to our channel. You can always unsubscribe later. Thanks so much for following along. Now let's get back to the video. start there's most likely oil in the piston so we're just gonna wait for it to dry out hopefully or not dry out but go back to its place and we're gonna try to get the boggin out of there it's a boggin so the gas it's gonna be pretty heavy that spot's filling up now that the ice is broken and kind of pulled it down i guess you could say it, yeah it's, it's filling up so Yep. Make sure it doesn't tip. That's that's all I got. Oh yeah. She's fine, she's fine. She's fine, she's fine. Come on. Come on, pop from the track. Let's go, let's go. That's a big step ahead. Then it's that that's the second biggest step. And then the third biggest step, or maybe the second biggest step is starting that machine. That would be a nice one. If we can get it started. And that would not be very pleasant. Indeed it wouldn't. Indeed it wouldn't. Indeed it wouldn't. How's it? How? 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 Tell me how. No! Should I say that again, Dad? I think it's a, uh, I don't think it's the hydro rock from the water from the pit because the air box is on that side. And it, it's oil, uh, yeah. Or yeah, because it tipped on the right side, not the left side. Yeah. So that was luck, kind of. What time is it? Well, we're gonna set a camp. We're gonna scout and see a good spot where we can just pull our. Uh, we decided to set up camp right here. It's actually a pretty spot, anyway. And we're going to let my machine rest. We've tried to start it a couple of times, but it doesn't, it's almost wants to start, but not quite. So we're going to let it sit so that the oil can trickle back and hopefully she'll get going. Um, Cause we are in the most remote part of this entire trip right now. Um, fingers crossed that she'll start without a problem. Oh, yeah. Anyway, 
We have a beautiful spot to set up camp for the night. There's lots of firewood and we made our 100 kilometers today. So that's a bonus. I just feel bad that I... And there's birch. And there's birch. Justin's been really excited about the birch because we don't have that at home. Yeah, hopefully we'll all be all right. Anyway, we're going to have a nice warm camp. I can dry out. I, I fell into the water all the way to my uh, hips pretty much, but I don't feel wet. Just my boots are full of water. Which is fine, that's why we have the boots we have. <laughs> okay, let's get to it. All right, we've got the tent all set up. The fire is slowly starting. Dinner is on the stove. It's time to go see if we can start my snowmobile. Fix that, we are going to start my snowmobile. It's been sitting for what, the last hour or so? Maybe two hours. So hopefully she's gonna start first try. Almost. Getting better. Uh, I'm gonna try again. I don't want to drain the battery either. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Woo. Oh, Woo. I'm so happy! <laughs> oh, I was so worried about that. Oh, I'm relieved. Man, this trip has been something else. I can't tell you how relieved I am. <laughs> oh. It's party time! We all got our special drink today at the store to celebrate another good day. One day closer to Dawson City. My machine started. Plenty to celebrate. day nine of this trip. We are camped out between Pelly Farm and Scroggy Creek. We're starting to think that maybe we can make it to Dawson in uh, two days or so. We'll see what today brings, how far we get, and we'll go from there. some good tracks this morning so far we did about 40 kilometers in the first two hours but uh, the other side of my toboggan hitch broke so while we're having lunch we are fixing that up we bought some chain and carmax for the case this would happen so we're trying to see if we can put it back together with that We have it fixed with some chain. It took 45 minutes, but we had lunch at the same time, so we didn't lose too much time. Let's see. There we go. Just use some chain. Kind of did the same system as we used with rope on the other side. When that broke on the first or what second day. <laughs> All right, cup of tea, and on we go. Tracks of what must be a pack of wolves on the trail since pretty much since Belly Farm yesterday. Scooby is just checking them out. <laughs> Smooth sailing today, so far. Got some trees to cut here. I think it's time for the chainsaw. Another spring 
Ik lees het. Oeps. Yeah. Yeah, the bottom is better. Yeah, but yesterday, I thought yesterday. You can see here, here looks good, but. Yeah, yeah, there could be the puddle. Yeah, it could be the. Okay. You want to try that? Yeah. And since the trail has been packed. What? Yep, let's go. Action. Froggy Creek checkpoint. Yeah. Vet clinic. Like awesome. Good morning. Oh. Welcome to Scroggy Creek. Property of the Urban Quest. Yeah, Dawson by Quest Trail, 152 kilometers. Woohoo! What is this? Yukon. Yeah. Wow, look at this. What, this is all 2016. Oh, cool. There's a lot of mushrooms then. Oh, there we go. 2019. 2017. The Arctic Ultra is on there too. Look at that. <laughs> Trail crew. What is the Arctic Ultra? It's a race where people run. 2014. Wow, that's so cool. There's some bunks. I guess we oh, we should write in there. Watch for the money there. It's fifteen degrees. Yeah. Plus or my oh, plus. plus. Yeah. Like everything is major ice and stuff. And yeah, we need to get over it. Get over it. Nice and nasty. So uh so we can inspect the people down there. Yeah. last major obstacle is to cross the Stewart River, or <laughs> one of the last major obstacles anyway, is to cross the Stewart River. Philippe just took my snowmobile without any luggage. I'm here with a thrower bag, but it looks fine going across, so fingers crossed, it should all be good. Because now we're really, once we cross here, it's like Dawson and that's it, no going back. We have to ride the Stewart River for a few kilometers. We are a bit nervous because of the temperature, and the fact that we are very remote in case something goes wrong. But despite a couple of big cracks in the shore ice and a bit of overflow, it goes well. Guru Guru! Yeah. Wow, the river was great! Yeah! Better than any river so far. That's very true. There was just some overflow spots here. 
Yeah, not much. Okay, we're gonna have a little snack. One. Yeah. Down, there's like a big drop off if you get down to the lower end. I see. Maybe like that, eh? Yeah. I don't know. The other solution would be. Here yeah, I'm gonna check if it's a dam or not. Oh yeah, water here. Yeah. Okay, so I would say we go and we assist here by hand and with the straps. Yeah. Uh, and right here in the snow. Yes, okay. I would do that uh, in there, using those wheels as a real grip. Momentum. Yeah, you're good. And the wheels may give us the little grip we need. Yeah. I would go through the wheels more. More, it's more slope, but more grip. So here, and then try to climb up like where Scooby is now. down oh yeah that is full of gas I think that's good Scowie give her give her Oh, 
Don't stop! No! Too bad. Well, he's not stuck yet. He can still move. So it's not considered stuck, but that was good job, Dad! Yahoo! Let's go! I'd slow down if I were you! Yeah. Just a little tip. Mine was the only one that didn't get stuck. Yeah. Huh. We made it to the Dawson gold field. That's really exciting to see some human sign. And uh, we're just going to set up camp in this cute spot. We usually start our camp setup by packing the snow. And we set up the tents and we haul some firewood, start the fire, cook some dinner, eat, put on our comfy clothes and go to sleep. Cause usually it takes about two hours from the moment we stop until we are cozy inside. So I'm gonna get to it. Another fun and adventure filled day comes to an end under a beautiful sunset. Although we are still 100 kilometers or so from Dawson City, seeing some mining camps along the way tonight was really exciting. It makes us feel closer and closer to the finish line. The warmer temperatures make camp life easier. We need less firewood and there's less waking up to stoke the fire in the middle of the night. Good morning, we are day 10 of this trip. We are still about 130 kilometers away from Dawson City. Yesterday we started to see some gold mines. Really exciting to see some human activity coming from the Dawson side. You can tell that we're getting closer, but we still have a ways to go. We hope to make it maybe by the end of tomorrow. We wake up to snowfall in the morning, ready to tackle the famous black hills that still lie between us and Dawson City. Justin's snowmobile has been acting up. So before we go anywhere, we decide to change his belt. After another number of spring glaciers, we come to the switchbacks. A series of switchbacks that are well known in the Yukon Quest. I can only imagine how acrobatic these turns can be with a team of 14 dogs. On the snowmobile, it's no problem, until we hit some serious wind-packed snow and things change. Due to the whiteout conditions and the snow shifting from soft to wind-packed, we decide to ditch our toboggans and break trail for a few kilometers. Because of whiteout conditions and a uh, steep uphill, and lots of snow drifts, we decided to leave our loads behind and break the trail ahead. And the proof of those whiteout conditions and not being able to see anything, like Philippe just hit a wall of a snow drift. And it's, when you look in the landscape, you don't even see that there is anything like that. Well, let's get him unstuck. Yeah. Oh, there's a big cross. I'm gonna see if I can. Not nope. even close. We're on the infamous Black Hills. 
and uh, the trailer is blown over so it's uh, we had to disconnect the, the, the trailers and bogans to make a track and even with, <laughs> with on, with, even without the, the bogans it was still pretty hard it's kind of a nasty crust that's good enough to walk on but not enough for ski to run and when you break through you go all the way there, all over the place uh, we had the side of the heels further down here nasty side of the heels hard to cut through because of the crust uh, invisible snow drift because of the blackout on top uh, we and deep snow yeah so you know the the heels of hell <laughs> and, and uh, so we broke the trail a few kilometers came back now we're taking the load where we stop and see from there. Yep. We um, we got to the part where we turned around to go pick up our toboggans and we just are leaving them behind again because there's another series of wind drifts here and it's much better on the backs to leave the toboggans behind, break the trail, come back and pick them up than it is to keep getting stuck, which we haven't yet, but we don't want to. So um, it's slow going, but it's going, which is great. We've been making progress, hooking up our boggins and just giving it a go. It's slow going, but that gives time to kind of see a bit of the trail. The sun is kind of popping out, showing the very pretty mountains that we kind of missed this morning, <laughs> but that's okay. We're moving forward. We're all doing good and we're having a good time. When we come to a pass, Philippe scouts ahead and finds the conditions to be better as this side of the hill is protected from the wind. We hook up our toboggans and start going down. After switch back to our surprise, we come to a plowed road. We made connection to the human world. <laughs> Good job. Done with the black hills. Done with the black hills. Woo. The road is plowed here. Good job, man. I'm so proud of you, Justin. What a kid. What a guy. And there's just enough of the skip of snow, I think, to make it okay. The level of excitement is high. But then we come to a part that's freshly plowed to the dirt. We decide to continue despite it potentially wrecking our runners. Thankfully, it didn't last too long. Up to King Solomon Dome where we pop out out of the clouds and are stunned by the scenery. Bulldozer plowed the road here, but in some spots we were unsure it would be plowed all the way, as there were some really big spring glaciers that he had to go through. When we come to the forestry road and the dredge number for historic side, we know we have no more unexpected surprises. We had planned to camp one more night, but as we are now in civilization, it's hard to find a camping spot. 
and we end up at the junction with the highway where we find the motel. Well done guys, we did it. We did it, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hotel, shower, find some food. There we go, see you later. Yoo-hoo! Yeah. Our arrival in Dawson wouldn't be complete without making it to downtown. So in the morning, while we waited for our friend to pick us up with our truck, we walked to downtown to take a picture in front of the Dawson City sign and make it official. There we go, we made it to Dawson City. Dawson City. Thanks everyone for following along this adventure. If you've, if you've enjoyed it, please don't forget to subscribe. We really appreciate it. Thanks.